and you. you can share your presentation um, and uh, yes. Thank you, Arjun. Happy to be here. Thank you for welcoming me to the community. My first time presenting at your user group, so this is great. Uh, nice to meet you, Rituan and Satya. Um, Same here. And great, uh, great session by David Patrick. I think I will just, uh, it's a great segue into my session as well. Uh, you know, how as uh, .NET developers and as native developers who uh, come from uh, not a data scientist or a machine learning specialized skill set can still build AI applications. So ML.NET was a was a fantastic uh, uh, opening to that space and uh, just will take off from where David had presented. So David was more on, for example, sentiment analysis. How do you predict sentiment analysis and of that sort? So we will look at more on how do you uh, analyze sentiments and other powerful features as well. So this uh, welcome to this session on how to AI-fi your applications with zero machine learning expertise. Let's get started. Uh, a little bit about myself. My name is Liji Thomas. I'm a Microsoft MVP in AI, a manager in data and AI with the Lonum Reply. We based out of central uh, US. Um, I would love to stay connected and to continue conversations and LinkedIn or other platforms if uh, you're curious and interested in this space. So, to take a step back and talk about, uh, you know, the vast opportunity that we have with uh, AI in the world today. Um, AI is no longer a hype. It is real and it is as real as it can get. And businesses across the globe, you know, they are very well aware and they acknowledge that fact because there's a lot of business benefits that come out of um, including artificial intelligence in your applications. Um, ranging from custom improving customer experience to uh, productivity to efficiency to margins to revenue growth and you know whatnot and it's all backed by research also backed by research is the fact that though technical leaders understand the benefits and the opportunities with ai there are a few challenges when it comes to building ai applications and one of them is the gap in the skill set not every organization has the machine learning expertise or the specialized data skills that you would need to build intelligent applications. So that's where cloud AI services come. Or in other words, these are AI services that have pre-built components and pre-built capabilities that you can use to build these applications. And there are a lot of challenges that it will help with there are advantages to using these cloud AI services. And one of the most expected benefits of cloud AI services is you do not need any of those specialized skills anymore to get started at least. So there's a lot of potential with that. Now, interestingly, Microsoft has been awarded one of the leaders in the Gartner quadrant. So if you can see the top right quadrant in the leader category, Microsoft is at the, you know, at the, at the end there and it's, just testimonial to the fact that how powerful Microsoft's cloud AI services are. So this is the present. And as I, I, I would like to give you a little bit of a history of these cloud AI services so you appreciate where this is coming from. So a little bit of the backstory here, right? So Microsoft started investing in AI services much before this was a hype. So this is like years and decades of research particularly across their research centers across the globe. So Microsoft Research Centers. And these research centers have been able to build what you'd call human algorithms and models that have attained human parity. What that means is, you know, an image recognition algorithm or an image caption algorithm, as you can see there, is able to caption an image just as good as a human can. So, this is very powerful and they've done that across machine comprehension, speech recognition, you know, so on and so forth. And one of the first things that they did with that is that once this groundbreaking research, they saw the potential of that, they infused that within their own applications. You know, if you're a Microsoft uh, user and you've used the Microsoft suite of applications like Word or PowerPoint or Excel, 
uh, you will see that there is a lot of AI features out of the box. You might not be aware of uh, these AI features, but they are a lot of AI part services. For example, you know, when I created this PowerPoint, there was PowerPoint design um, elements and there were ideas that came. When you can see those insights in Excel, you can see um, you know, uh, such kinds of features in Word, etc. These are all powered under the hood by um, AI service, cloud AI services or cognitive services. So they didn't again stop there. What they did is they packaged all of this goodness and they democratized these AI services um, and they released it so that developers like you and I can use these services to build intelligent applications and agents. So this is the entire portfolio of AI services across Microsoft. So if you look, it, it starts right from Azure Machine Learning, which is uh, able using which you're able to build really powerful and custom models all the way up to low code, no code solutions, right? And somewhere in the middle, you have these cognitive services or AI cloud AI services that we will talk about. So now we will deep dive into cognitive services or the uh, Microsoft's offering for cloud AI services. So Azure Cognitive Services are nothing but a collection of APIs for AI. So using these pre-built AI models, you, know, you don't have to start from scratch. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Using these, you can build intelligence into your application. And this is perhaps the fastest way for business applications to integrate AI into their solutions. So if you would like to give an intelligent side, a human side to your applications, and you can get started with cognitive services today. At a very high level, these are the five major branches or categories that they have. So they have vision, they have speech, decision, language, and as of late, very recently, open AI as well. So using these services, what happens is that you, your applications can now have the capability to see, to speak, to make decisions, to accelerate decision making, to understand language and so on and so forth. So under each of these, though, I will say under each of these divisions, you will have a lot of a APIs that are available for you. Um, Though we would love to go through each and every one of this just for the sake of time, I will double click on the language category for the rest of the session. So you just have a feel of the kind of capabilities that are available for you out of the box. So under language, um, again, you have so many capabilities um, to just understand it as given a piece of text, right? It could be an entire knowledge base or even just a paragraph, a piece of text. How do you extract information out of that? How do you extract key phrases? How do you extract entities? How do you classify text? How do you understand what it means? If someone asks a set of questions, uh, can you answer those questions based off that piece of text that you have? Can you translate that piece of text? So, you know, language has got a lot of capabilities under that. And, We'll quickly look through a few of these um, in the time that we have. So to get started, uh, question answering. So question answering, as you can see, can be used to find the answers to a question. So if I, if I've given an uh, an application or an agent a piece of um, text, and I'm if I ask it uh, a few questions, will it be able to answer that questions from that piece of text that it has? So there's a lot of use cases for this. You know, you can consider chatbots or virtual assistants, and this is how it it really operates. So when a user asks it a question, it should be able to um, connect at that and answer. But it might seem very simple. It's, uh, traditionally, developers were consider using a regex pattern or just pattern matching and then looking for keywords and just returning the answer, right? So here's where it gets tricky. Now, let's say we had a chatbot for um, global AI. And let's say someone asks, when is the global event AI event happening? The bot would respond, well, it happens between October 26th to November 4th, 2022. Simple, right? Now, as beautiful as our human language is, this is where it gets interesting. 10 different people would ask the same question in 10 different ways. I mean, I would ask the same question in so many different ways, depending on when I ask and how I ask that. So 
irrespective of however that's been asked, a bot would need to understand that the questions really mean the same thing. These are just alternative phrases for the same question. And then this is how I would want to answer that question. So there are so many nuances with just a uh, question answering itself. And we need to have a powerful AI service which will be able to account for all of these um, features. So let me demo uh, how the question answering service or the AI service works for you. And um, you know, before I jump into the demo, I want to show that all that we are doing um, in the in this session is fully possible in code. Um, you know, th there are steps to actually do this in code as well. But uh, for today's session, I will be using a tool called Language Studio. Um, it is a, it is a tool from Microsoft, a fairly new one. You can try that one as well. And then using Language Studio, we can see the capabilities of these AI services. And within Language Studio, you will also find the next steps to how to incorporate these into code. So if I have to quickly uh, switch to my uh, Language Studio. So here I have it. And um, I will just uh, sign in to my Language Studio and uh, so I can use my services there. So uh, just know that, um, you know, uh, before I had gone into Language Studio, I had really created a resource in Azure, which is for language. Uh, if you have um, an Azure account today, a subscription today, you can create a resource there, or it's just a $200 credit. You can, you get credit versus $200 if you start a free account as well. Create a language resource and then sign into language.cognitive.azure.com. So all of these are there in my resources uh, file as well. So these are the capabilities of the language service. And what we are specifically interested in right now is question answering. So let me find that here. There you go. So to answer questions, as you can see, you know, you, this is like a live demo for you. You can select the language, you can select your resource, and you can actually go, you can, upload your own piece of text if you'd like, but you can also select one of these here. So I'm going to select this piece of text that's about the Space Needle in Seattle, and I'm going to ask it a question, what is Oculus? And when I run, you'll see that it responds, the service response with the answer here. So there's a short answer, there's a long answer. If you really look at it, this is where it got the answer from. And likewise, I can ask it any number of questions. And if you're interested, you will also see the JSON response for that. Now, this is how you would do it, just investigating and exploring the services in um, Language Studio. To do this in code, you have all the next steps over here. So you need to create a language resource, get the uh, key and the endpoint, and then you have even code samples that are available from GitHub, or you can just test the API. If you'd like to see the pricing, which is usually a pay-as-you-go pricing, you know, conversational language understanding, uh, I mean, language understanding, all these language services just went GA, and you also have notes on responsible use of AI. So this is the flow that we would uh, generally follow. If you're interested, if you, if you see that this will suit your particular use case that you're trying to solve for, the problem statement that you're trying to solve for, explore the features here, and then go and uh, you know build the code for that. And you can do this for any language services. So let's take a look at some of the other services also that we have. Okay, so that's about question answering. Now, if I have to take it one step further and I have to ask, sometimes you really need to understand the meaning behind a piece of text. So, uh, you know, even in just human to human communication, it's you it's very tricky to understand the overall intention of a piece of text. And again, the same use cases. So you would really need to have that kind of capability for assistance, even voice assistance and uh, those kinds of intelligent applications. Coming back to our same use case here. Now, someone could ask when is the session on responsible AI? Other people could be interested in other sessions, but they literally, if you look at the pattern there, everyone is just trying to find out details about sessions. So uh, from an intelligent application perspective or agent perspective, what it does is 
It understands that all of these are just utterances, various user utterances. It finds out that there is a common intent here. There is a common intention here, which is to find a session. And it understands that there are variables in this. So responsible AI, form recognizer, gun, they all trying to find sessions on just different session topics. So session name is really the variable which we, in technical terms we would call entity. So this is how we go about trying to understand the meaning behind a piece of text. So this is this requires a little more than plain question answering, but we have a service for just for these kind of cases. So that's called conversational language understanding. Um, and I would love to demo that. So if you go back to our language studio and uh, um, understand questions and this, and if you scroll down here a bit, you have conversational language understanding. By the way, there are far more features in this language studio that we possibly will uh, you know, will not finish covering to today, but then feel free to explore all of that. So under conversational language understanding, what I've done is I've already created a project for global AI. And uh, on the left panel here, you will find various um, options to you know, do the same things that we explained in the PowerPoint right now. So you go ahead and you can create an intent. How you create an intent is by clicking add and then you create an intent. Sim, I would also create an entity in anticipation of the fact that someone might be looking to find a name, find a session, and uh, I'm anticipating that there will be entity names as well. So here's where you go and you just enter the entity name and you're done. Similarly, I would go clear, create an intent and I'm done. So that's how I've created the intent and I've created the entity. The next thing what I'd like to do is that I'd like to train the system. So for training the system, I would give it a number of utterances. Uh, best practices is to give it at least 10 utterances per session, so it does a good job at training. But if you look at all this, all these utterances that we had discussed in our session, we have added the exact same utterances. So I'm telling the essentially I'm training the system to tell it that you know someone might be looking to find a session, and then these are some of the ways that they could ask this question. And I'm trying to train it upfront for that. Um, as I train it. I can also indicate where the entity name is and how I would do that is that so this is a great user interface. I would if you if you've just seen the way I've marked it, I know that ML ops is the entity name that I would mark it and I would rename it that way. So let me do that again and I would select it as session name. So there you go. So you've entered your utterances. You have labeled your session names in that and that way the system is now set up for success. So the next time someone asks um, in a completely different fashion as well, it should be able to uh, predict that uh, the meaning is find it, the intention there is to find a session. And then once it finds out that intent, then it's a question of just answering that. Uh, then it's just a challenge of just answering that question for which you can use question answering or several other services. So this service is all about finding the meaning or the intent behind a piece of text. So I would put in the session, as I said, just create an intent, create an entity, you know, put in the utterances, and I would go on and um, uh, you know train the job, and then you know to check the model performance. I can deploy the model. So for the sake of time, we probably not be able to do all of that, but you get the idea. So that's how you would you would uh, you know predict what the new utterances are. So uh, if you if any of your of uh, the chatbot users come tomorrow and say a completely different um, you know utterance as well, uh, the bot will be able to understand that. OK, I think what they want is to be able to find a session and what they are looking for is this particular session and then I will route it to uh, the agenda or to the schedule. So that's with uh, conversational language understanding. Um, Another great feature is named entity recognition. Now, given a piece of text, sometimes we may need to understand if there are specific entities in that piece of text. Is there a reference to a person, a location, or an organization, 
or a, a phone number or a URL or a quantity for all valid reasons, right? So um, sometimes, so these uh, these entities that we discussed right here, these are standard entities that you know just set categories, and you have subcategories for these as well. Sometimes you might want very custom entities, entities that are very uh, customized for your specific domain or your organization, and that's where you come with the option of custom named entity recognition. So let's say you are in a legal firm or you have a specific um, a, a research concept that like you need to find out a named entity that that is not a standard named entity that's very customized for your specific need. You can do that by using custom named entity recognition. Now, most interestingly, if you take this one step further, some applications have the requirement to identify um, uh, identify and mask as well PII information. So personal information may not be, uh, it, it, we might need to you know, apply sensitive sensitivity labels to those. So you do have this API capability to understand from these named entity recognition if there is any PII information and so that we can address it accordingly. So all of this and more is possible by using entity recognition. Let me show you how quickly. So going back to our language studio, um, you have, as you can see here, extra, extract named entities, extract key phrases, extract PII. In fact, I would just start with extract PII because that actually shows you named entities and PII and more. So. Same concept here, I would go and select, you can upload your own file, your own text piece if you'd like. You can also do your own like legal N NDA. There's an example here. Now, if I have to run this API service on this, and let's check, take a look at the results here. It has identified that from this piece of text, it is, it's been able to identify that there's a date. There is an employee, there's a person type, there's an organization, there's a person, there's an address, um, there's an email address, there's a phone number. So it is able to identify, you know, a lot of such uh, parameters from this. If you want to take another one and again uh, run the same, uh, you know, it, it identifies a lot. And if you note, there is a confidence score on each of this. So it will tell you, you know, how confident does it feel about the response here? Like as we had discussed in previous cases, fairly simple to use this in code, create a language resource. You can use the A, you know, just like you would invoke any other APIs in code. Use the subscription, use the key, uh, key and the endpoint, and then run the code. So you even have samples in GitHub and you can see this. But this is out of the box, the capability, um, you know, um, of these services. So. If I have to go back and I show you that uh, a shorter version of that is what you would see in the uh, in extract named entities. And it is also possible for you to do custom named entity recognition. So if you want to do this very customized for your specific project or domain, you can do that. You just need to train the model. All right. This is one of my favorites, I will tell you, with sentiment analysis and opinion mining, simply because there are a lot of use cases uh, that we can uh, use this for. So, uh, you know, if you would like to help people find out uh, the sentiment behind a piece of text, um, this is a very valuable service. Imagine you have um, uh, in, in social media, you have a lot of customer um, opinions or reviews that come through and you want to be able to understand the sentiments from that and help improve your services. Uh, you have a bot that needs to understand the sentiments of your customers to know proactively to, you know, do I continue having this conversation or do I bring a, in a human agent? So lo lots of examples of that sort. So this is uh, this is an area that I find a lot of use cases for. And as simple as it may sound, there are challenges with this as well. You know, sim with sentiment analysis, typically what it does is if you give it a piece of text, it should return a score between zero and one. So zero stands for negative sentiment, and one stands for positive sentiment. And anywhere in between, like 0 0.5 is like neutral, right? So let's say a customer gives a, a, a 
is a is reviewing a hotel um, and uh, giving it uh, a review which says I love the hotel location and the customer service was excellent. Very straightforward. And if you give that to the system, the system identifies that. Oh, it's a positive sentiment. There's no confusion there, right? It returns a score of one, which indicates purely positive. Now, tough luck does not always happen like this in a real world. Practical cases and in practical scenarios, here's what happens. Uh, if you look, and this is common if you look at the Amazon reviews, if you look at other websites, if you look at uh, social media reviews, it's usually a mixed sentiment or like there are things that the customer like, there are things that they did not particularly like. So if you say, I love the hotel location, but was disappointed with the room service. Now that particular sense, the sentence has got a number of sentiments. That, so, so there's, and you left wondering if it's a positive or a negative sentiment overall, right? So here's where you need to go one step further and say that there are mixed, the sentence overall or the paragraph overall has got a mixed sentiment, but identify specifically what was positive and what was not in that sentiment. So if you say like hotel location has got a very positive sentiment attached to that because love the hotel location, but the room service has a negative sentiment. Now, a feature of sentiment analysis that helps us in this regard is called opinion mining. So it mines the specific attributes or aspects um, or opinions in a piece of text. So you get very granular details um, related to attributes. In that way, it helps you address customer um, or feedback um, uh, you know, opportunities a lot faster. So you know specifically what to target. You know, if, if, uh, if someone was disappointed with the room service, so that's specifically the area that I want to address and I want to uh, you know, target and uh, keep improving on the hotel location. So it's a little more than even classic sentiment analysis, I would say. Now, luckily, we have AI services that does this, uh, all of this for you. So let's see how. So if I go back into Language Studio and uh, I will check analyze sentiments and opinions, now you know that opinion mining, as I said, just takes it one step forward. So you may or may not choose to enable opinion mining. It's, it's an additional parameter that you would send with the sentiment analysis API itself. So if you do not want to do that, you, you don't have to, uh, but I will just turn that on to show you what the capabilities are. So here again, you know, feel free to use your own piece of text and let's say and I'd like to see this as a customer complaint and uh, it's a huge paragraph like this is how you would expect to get it in a, uh, in a practical scenario, right? And if I send it and I would ask it to run the AI service on that, so the, the document overall has got a mixed sentiment, obviously, and sentence by sentence, it is able to extract um, details on the sentiments for me. So if for the sake of time, I would go here and see that it is able to assess for each target. So let's talk about food, right? So the, for as far as food was concerned, the assessment was, was wonderful. So it's a positive sentiment and same thing goes for service. So service again was wonderful. So it's a positive sentiment. Now the experience, that's another target. But as, as far as experience was concerned, now the assessment is it was negative because what they talked about experience was it was just awful. So that's a negative sentiment. So if you have, if you run the a API for this, if you look at the JSON response as well, if you run the API, you will get details for each and every attribute. You get details of was it positive, negative or neutral and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, that way you are better positioned and better ma you can better manage these uh, sentiment scores that come through instead of giving a whole up like was it 0.25 or 0.95 for the whole document or for the full sentence. But as you've noted, you can do this at a document level. You can do this at a sentence level and within a sentence, you can do this at a, at a target level. So for each attribute, you will be able to assess the opinions of that. Um, so this is all of the capabilities of sentiment analysis and opinion mining. Again, same process if you'd like to use this in code, use the, create a language resource, 
use the key and the endpoint and invoke the API in the same way you would invoke any other API, parse the JSON result, and uh, for your piece of text, it will return the sentiments and opinions. All right. With that, let's go back and probably the last one. Uh, we, if we have time, we can take a few more, let's say, but these are some of the, the uh, translation is a very common feature, is a very uh, 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 you know, common ask in so many other applications and AI services, the Azure AI Cognitive Services have got support for 100 plus languages. You can translate that. One of the questions I get asked is um, human translation versus machine translation. So machine translation has improved over the years for uh, a variety of reasons, and it's got very powerful with just single REST API calls. You can do instant translation. You know, the translation capabilities that you see during Teams calls and others, you are able to understand how how powerful these capabilities are. So it detects the language for you. It is able to live translate for you, even look up, you know, alternate translations. But just as we did in the case of um, entity recognitions, sometimes you have domain specific terminology that you may not find. It's not a very commonly used, uh, you know, text term. For those uh, scenarios, there are features to for you to build custom translation uh, projects. So using that, you can uh, create a models where you can custom train for your specific, your domain specific uh, terminology. So, um, you know, there's a wide range of use cases that this can be used for. So if you, let's say your chatbot or your virtual assistant is multilingual and you are supporting, um, you know, global languages or you have in-app communication. So you can do all of this and uh, more using these AI services, which as we saw from the beginning, these are production quality AI services that have been tested at scale at Microsoft within their own projects and they've released for us. So um, we can go ahead and use these you know, in programming languages of our choice, if you know, like C Sharp, you know, JS, you can invoke these APIs and you can build these applications. So going back to Language Studio, um, I will just show you where the custom translation capabilities are so you can translate this piece of text. Again, you'd have to build your own model to uh, customize uh, translation capabilities. So with that, I think we will come to a full round summary of uh, the uh, services here. I know we started with the uh, capabilities or the potential opportunities for uh, um, you know, Azure Cognitive Services and uh, you know, the benefits of cloud AI services and Microsoft's offering in the space, which is Azure Cognitive Services. We looked at the various divisions and then uh, of the different categories, we chose Azure Cognitive Service for language and uh, you know, the, all the features that are available under Azure Cognitive Services for language. If you have uh, been working with uh, Azure Cognitive Service for language previously, you would uh, re understand that there's been a lot of changes and recent advancements in this field. Like uh, previously, you might have used Language Understanding Service, Lewis. So now you have Conversational Language Understanding or CLU instead of that. Previously, you might have used Q&A Maker, uh, and now you have question answering service. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, plat the platform and the SEA services have matured over the last couple of months, a year, I would say, and, uh, you know, expecting to see very powerful features in this space. So I will kind of end with a note on responsible AI. Um, as much as, you know, we are all excited to be able to build intelligent apps and agents. It is also a responsible uh, responsibility to be able to build these in a um, in an ethical fashion. So Microsoft's uh, principles for responsible AI along fairness, reliability, safety, privacy, security, and uh, these have been taken into consideration while creating these services. You will find those in the transparency notes perhaps something for us to keep in mind as we build using these services as well. Um, these are some of the references that you might find helpful if you would like to pursue, uh, you, you know, if you'd like to further study these. Um, I'm happy to share this in my LinkedIn account and 
make the deck available for you as well. Um, with that, I think that's all I have, and I leave it's back to you, Rizwan. Thank you, everyone, for your time and attention this evening, and uh, I'm open to questions. Uh, thank you, Miss uh, Liji. Uh, thank you for such a great session. And uh, yeah, uh, we got deep insights about the Microsoft Cloud Services, uh, Azure Cognitive Services, and also uh, based on Gartner, Microsoft Cloud Services at best place right now. And also, which makes Microsoft uh, Azure Services one of the best cloud service provider as of now. So um, uh, I think. Uh, as I can see, there are no any question and. Uh, yeah, so. Um, let me now uh, call our another participants. Um, so uh, let's move to our next session. Um,